Hello. I'd like to look at a tool that aids you in finding out what kinds of elements are used in the various bodies that you mesh. Here I have four bodies. There they are in the geometry listing. Under the mesh controls, I've left midside nodes as program controlled, and that means that it will use high order elements for 3D solids. We know that from experience. I've put in some meshing controls on one particular body to force it to go into hybrid meshing. It will actually contain two element types. And I'm doing this just for the purpose of illustration. Here are our bodies. I've put pressure on the top faces. I've put fixed support on the backs. And I calculate deformations. Now if I click on Solution, and go up to Worksheet after I solve, I can see a listing of some of the specialized things that I can inspect with user-defined results. There are many things I could look at, and a few things that are specific to given element types that don't even appear in this list, and that I could access using element table type commands for the particular kind of element. Interestingly, if I scroll down near the bottom of this list, I'll see entries based on PNUM. And I can color or look at the results in my model, contour colored by element type number, real constant number, material number, section property number, the actual element numbers themselves. And most interestingly, here I can see the element name number. So if it's solid 186, I'll get a 186 in my contour plot. Let's go have a look at the number. First, element types. And in here, I, you can see that my element types are ranging from 1 to 5. Now what element types 1 through 5 might mean, I could discover if I go in here, Solution Information, look at the Solver Output listing, scroll down, and down here, I can see that I have solid 186 as element type 1 and solid 187 as element type 2. That's a 10-node tetrahedron, and it's going to be hidden in the interior of this body where I put in those hybrid meshing controls. So there will be some 10-noded tetrahedrons hidden inside this body. So there we are with the element type numbers ranging from 1 to 5. Now you know that the element type numbers are discrete integers, although contouring is intended to be continuous. But still, this gives us an idea what's up. More interestingly, if I go in under element name, well, the names are 186 and 187. That's for solid 186 and solid 187. We can tell there must be some 187s hidden in here, even though we can't find them. If instead of looking at the entire model, you go down and focus your element name contour plotting on one body, you'll see that this body must contain somewhere some 187 elements hidden on the inside. I could go in and I could put a section plane in here. There it is. Rotate the model, and you can tell, and let's look at it this way so that we see the actual element shapes, you can see that there are some 187s, those 10 noted tetrahedrons, hidden in the interior of that body. Turn that view off. Go here. You'll notice it's all 186s on the outside, solid 186s, the 20 node bricks, and there must be some 187s in there. And also, there are our element type numbers, which you can coordinate with what's in that output listing. There it is again. I hope you'll find these to be interesting tools. Perhaps your customers are interested to know what kinds of elements you have in your model. For extra convenience, note that you could probe the bodies in your model, going around like this, and quickly getting the numbers, in this case, the element type numbers, or in this case, the element name numbers that are in your bodies. 
Here we are looking at the element type numbers contour plotted. We can go up and find a useful little tool. Let's look at capped isosurfaces. Right now we're looking at top capped isosurface and as I move this slider up and down it'll highlight different contour levels and you can see the element type numbers in the different bodies. It's particularly interesting to note that here we can see the tetrahedrons hidden inside the body that had the hybrid meshing. You can also look at bottom capped and go the other way, but now you don't get to see those hidden tetrahedrons. So that's another tool that might be helpful in letting you review element type numbers in a model, or if you had many element names in a model, it could help you with those as well. There are the 187s. If we go the other way, here are the 186s. So that can isolate certain bodies. Now, this will not show you the element type numbers of the surface effect elements and the contact elements that might be employed in a structural model, but it will show you what your bodies have been meshed with, whether they are line bodies, surface bodies, or as we see here, three-dimensional solid bodies. Thanks for joining me.